I'm deep. I don't stand. Can I, can I adjust this mic? Yeah, let's see. It's fine. And you want me like this? Hmm? Where's my phone? Where's my snare? him okay that looks good and then matt will put the screen here right yeah it'll go okay right i think this camera could have we're gonna have to lower this and mm -hmm. put it up on it so it gets me like from the chin up okay you, you know what you i'm want saying an upward angle yeah i think so because it's always looking at my forehead my shiny fucking forehead change i need you in it box. what change the light box the light box shouldn't be dead on anyway and actually the, what you need is three-point light and the fuck is three point light? Well, you have to reflect. Is that an Emerson, Lake, and Palmer song? If you don't reflect, see, the one side of your face is, is light, right? You need to have something to reflect, soft reflection off the other side of your face. Otherwise, you take on a sinister look every time there's dark. If you want to make something look sinister, you light one side of the face. I don't even that's know what that means. A, that's exactly what he wants to look like. See, a sinister is well, not, not bad. Yeah, it's a good look for him. <laughs> A good one. Okay, I gotta try not to look down at you bitches. Is that how you want to start off from uh, my story from the beginning? Or I, I lead and you follow, and yes, your story from the beginning. Like Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, see? From the beginning. I'm an Army vet, by the way, if you want to. Thank you for your service. Well, we're gonna ask you all that. You're gonna fill in the blanks for us on a lot of stuff. All right. That's good. Ain't good now? Yep. <laughs> This way I can see him. How's my mic sound, senor? Talk again. How's my mic mm sound? -hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> That's Swahili. Why? Because I'm working on my Swahili. I hear them Swahili girls are hot. Are they? Yeah, that's what I heard. They got rings and everything. <laughs> Mind if I smoke? I don't care. Okay. You don't care if I burn. He's here all week, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. You're good. <coughs> no coughing on set. Um, okay, for the camera, uh, Gunfire Radio Season 8, Episode 378 is live in 5, 4. Three, two, and we're up. Five seconds. Help me. And stand by. Live from the land that freedom forgot, the most listened to Second Amendment broadcast in the nation. Welcome to it. And we have a guest in the studio we've been trying to get on for the past uh, two years now, but he lives two hours away. So uh, the sun and the moon and the equinox lined up or some shit like that. Oh, I can't curse. This is also being used to some <laughs> shoot, but poop like that. Excuse me. Like uh, we have John Gillard on the show. Welcome, brother. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, military veteran. Is his mic working, Sandy? I didn't hear anything. It is. Go. Yeah, let me hear it again. Uh, thanks for having me. <laughs> I didn't hear him in my headphones. You sure he's okay? Technical difficulties. Try it again, bro. <laughs> well, can you hear me now? Sandy? I got him on the screen. I don't have him in my ears. Anymore. I don't have him in my ears either. Where's my snare? I'm hungry. Let's do this effort. Let's just figure this out. Okay. I'm sorry. No problem. Can I just talk for me for a second? Yeah, can you hear me? Nope. Well, uh, yes, I am a military vet. Okay. Army, you said? Yes. Thank you for your service. No problem. 
Uh, so the reason we have John on the show today, he's uh, the, 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 nope, it's not coming through, right? Want him to switch mics? Nope. I'm going to just read Okay. Mm. Go ahead, John. Yes, I ah. am. Uh, Okay. This right. is this is what happens when we YouTube shit. Okay. <laughs> right. right. This stuff goes just through. Stop. Just kill the YouTube right now. This is take two. Take two. Take two. Not one. Take two. Two. Okay. Uh, Gunfire Radio season eight episode three seven eight is live. Five, four, three, two. Five seconds. And stand by. Live from the land that freedom forgot, the most listened to Second Amendment broadcast in the nation. Welcome to it. The nation. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we're YouTubing this. I want to tell everybody, uh, I asked for 100 YouTube followers so we can get a custom domain from YouTube after 30 days. We got 550 followers in two days, and we've had about 400 people look at our first uh, YouTube. So there'll be plenty more to come. So thank you all. Uh, find it, sign up for it, make sure you follow us. Obviously, Gun for Hire Radio. So we have a special guest in the in the studio today, John Gillard, who is the uh, the other half of the uh, Cheeseman Gillard case or Gillard Cheeseman case for right to carry uh, in New Jersey. And they have a GoFundMe page. I want to get it out yeah. there right away while we talk about it. I've been pitching this. Uh, Andrew PC donated 500. Gun for Hire myself donated 500. Ten dollars, fifteen dollars, twenty dollars. I don't care what you can donate to this cause, but GoFundMe case, uh, case. It's Restore Dash Carry Dash NJ on the GoFundMe page. John, welcome to our family. Welcome to the studio. Thanks for having me. Oh, I can hear him now. <laughs> Beautiful. So, so here's the deal. Uh, you're a military veteran. Yes, uh, Army vet. So how does it feel now with the 15-round mag ban? You, you can't even carry 15 rounds. They discriminate against our veterans, too, who served our country honorably. Yeah, um, that 15-round mag is, is like saying that the first 10 uh, people shot in a, in a crime is okay. You know what I mean? Because the 11th, 12th, and 13th round, um, that's, the, that's when they have a problem. But if it saves one life? If it saves one life, then ban pools. I like that. I like that. More kids die in pools than they do from uh, gunshots. So. so so if anybody new listening today, uh, Gillard, Cheeseman, and with the backing of J Factor, uh, mm -hmm. the, the scribe <clears throat> for all things constitutionally uh, acceptable and not acceptable for 2A in the country, actually. We're going to have him on a whole show with just uh, J, as a matter of fact. So what happened? What brought you here? How did you end up with a lawsuit? Let the people outside of New Jersey understand what's going on here. All right, well... If you're not familiar, uh, in New Jersey, you have to have a, a good reason, justifiable reason, whatever they want to call it. You can use different terminology, but you have to have a reason to have your Second Amendment. Um, no one needs a, a reason to go to church, but for some reason, for a second, uh, you need to have a reason. And when I got out of the military, of course, I mean, I had a shotgun, a rifle in my closet at home, but never really thought about handguns or anything like that. Um, but then there was an incident um, where the person who uh, committed a crime toward me and my family, um, he was arrested, he was caught, he uh, served five years or so in prison, got out. But during that process, while he was in jail, he made some threats. Um, basically that uh, he was going to retaliate and blamed me for his crime. Um, so that led me into wanting to uh, defend myself and my kids. I have four of them. Um, so that's when I started really getting into it. And I was like, you know, I, I think I have a good enough reason. It seems like a justifiable need to me. Death threats right. from an inmate in prison would, would be justifiable. Our listeners out there, would you agree? 
Yeah. Um, so during that process, I ended up going to a couple um, events. I met, I met Mark. Um, so he was informing me stuff that I didn't know. And it seems like a lot of people don't know. Did you grow up in New Jersey? Yeah, I'm uh, born and raised here. Okay. Other than my time in the military, I was I, I lived here. Okay. Um, but I was kind of you know a noob in in a way of going for a handgun carry permit. So meeting Mark like was, most people are. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, meeting Mark and uh, he informed me of some things, and I'm like, well, I I believe you know I have a good reason. My class is half full. I use that terminology a lot. Um, and then doing the whole process. Now I had restraining orders, I have proof, I have witness statements. Thought it was a, you know, slam dunk really. But, um, you know, so we end up going to court, me and Mark, are, we went to this court the same day. So he went first. Um, the, of course, they, they denied him. Of course. Um, and then it was my turn. Now I went through a nice, you know, when it was my turn to talk, you know, I had a nice, nice speech laid out a lot of stuff, and then of course the prosecutor had to throw his two cents in. But the thing that really was mind blowing, and Mark would say the same thing, is during his conversation or his, I don't know what you want, discussion, his rebuttal to me, he said, uh, he says, uh, if I was in his shoes, I would get a permit too. So he admitted he... The prosecutor. The prosecutor. Okay. But it's, you're it's, not part of the political elite. Yeah, yeah I'm not so, an elite. Yeah, so, you're an un, part of the unwashed masses. Right. So that right there, I put my everything into that statement that he said. You know, I even said it to the judge. Like, he said it. It's in my uh, transcripts that he um, understands where I was coming from. He sympathizes where I'm coming from. And even as far as saying that if he was in my shoes, he would apply and get a permit too. But then tells the judge to deny me. So the judge, during his uh, you know, ruling, in his five minute speech, I actually at one point thought he was gonna give it to me. And then he went, but uh, Governor Christie with the serious threat that he had tried to change yes. that um, some Murphy legislators- Murphy right yeah, back. And Murphy flipped it. Uh, he goes that that serious threat part didn't open the door wide enough for him to give me a permit, but then said you should appeal because um, you know a three judge panel might see differently. So he denied you, but it advised you to appeal. Yeah. So go ahead. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So we only had I, I think it was thirty days to file. Um, an appeal. So me and Mark got together and said, let's do this together. So we both appealed. We, we kept the cases separate, but they are together because mm -hmm. our arguments are basically identical, almost word for word. Um, so we appealed. We sent all the paperwork in. Um, now we're pro se, but J Factor. Finding it themselves, no lawyers. Yeah. Uh, J Factor, he's been working on this argument for a long time. And uh, he jumped on with us, wrote an incredible brief. He, Jay's not a lawyer, but he plays one in a gym. <laughs> yeah, right. The football the factory. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> um, he he did a lot of research. I mean, he read so many. Like, I don't know if there's anybody out there, even lawyers included, maybe even judges, that read through word for word the cases that Jay went through to really fine tune the argument. And me, me and Mark think that. It was, um, it's a great brief. I think it's winnable without a doubt. It's just a matter of how far these leftist judges are. But um, we submit. Now, being pro se, they're supposed to give you a lot of uh, leeway, leeway Correct. on your brief. You can screw up. Correct. And, yeah. So we send it in. Mark, I think, is about a week and a half behind mine. So I end up getting a letter back. Now, the crazy part is I don't even know if they read it because timing they only they would have had my brief less than four days by the time i sent it in got the um, receipt back from delivery and by the time i got my letter back with the they denied it they denied accepting it they gave me a letter full of 12 things that i need to fix which included like 
my font size. Like, Unbelievable. Like, a, I, I don't quote me on it, but it was like, say I wrote it on 14 point font, they want it 12 point font. So, just stuff like that. Um, and, and Jay was, boom, he, he quickly fixed it, sent it back. Now, <laughs> Mark gets his back, which is identical brief to mine, um, other than his name and some some things about his particular case. But the argument itself is the same. He gets 11 things wrong with his. <laughs> so, I mean, like, um, why does mine had 12 and he has 11? I don't know, but he quickly fixed his and sent it back. Um, now, flash forward now, this is, uh, you know, late August. And <clears throat> I found out that my everything that I submitted has been accepted and has been marked for um, calendar. So they're just waiting for a date to set it on the calendar. It's been that way for a while. It's been accepted and waiting for a date for more than a month. So a judge got to pick it up. Yeah. Could you imagine this? Judge Butthead is going to rule from the bench. John Gillard, I deny your permit to carry because your font size was wrong. <laughs> That's how it works. When we come back, he's going to tell us more about this journey. Their GoFundMe page is restore-carry-nj. Yep. And Remember, calandroforNRA.com. CalandroforNRA.com. I need a few hundred more signatures uh, in the next month and a half. A few hundred more signatures in the next month and a half. If you're not a member of ANJRPC, forty dollars a month, you get the new forty dollars a year. You get a newsletter every other month, tells you what's going on in the state of New Jersey and uh, with the NRA. But I need more signatures, friends or family. You go to gun shows or whatever. Caland no, let's leave it that way. I'm in <laughs> distress. Calandro, oh, Calandro for no, no, Cal oh, Calandro for NRA. Thank you, John. John had my back on that. That's because he's an American and he's prior military, so they watched her back. I need more signatures. Life member or a member in good standing for five years or more. The nominating committee met yesterday, and I'll know in two or three days if I got nominated. If I didn't, I'm running solely on petition. If I do get nominated, I want to be. I want to run under nomination and petition because I want to get on the board because I want to back up Scott Bach, and I have some different tax and different ways of doing things. I want to bring the battleground states uh, to light a little bit more in uh, at NRA National. Are we almost ready? This is what goes on. So today I'm carrying a ZT knife, which is a Ken Onion design, which I really like. And very, of course very I'm well balanced. Yes, of course I'm smoking Mi Vepo. If you ever need one, they're good to have. I have them here. Stop by, I'll give you one. And as soon as the show's done, I'm going to smoke me this Liga Pravada number nine. That's next after the show. Did I do okay? Yeah, you get the. Uh, I got to keep doing shit. Okay. Uh, so if YouTube bans me, I want to give them a half a peace sign if they if they <laughs> do in fact ban me. I, they're not worthy of a full peace sign yet, but I'll give them a half a peace sign if they ban me. Uh, if you haven't been to the range, stop on by, and uh, we're coming back now, so I might as well say goodbye. And this segment is brought to you by Medallion Chiropractic. Look at this, I'm holding cute cards up now, okay? Medallion Chiropractic is on Valley Road in Wayne. Dr. Henry Medallion, this platinum member of the range. Many, many kids. This camera thing was definitely a bad idea. Uh, well, I'm going to have a doctor come on and we're going to do a root canal on air while I'm doing the show. 
Dr. Hemi Medallion, M-A-D-A-L-I-A-N, chiropractic.com, medallionchiropractic.com. Check them out. Support those who support us, okay? All right, John, so continue <clears throat> what happened. So you and Mark, your font size was wrong. You know, you had death threats from prison, but font size is a priority yes. in the Soviet Socialist Republic of New Jersey, right? Yeah. All right, all right continue, <laughs> brother. So... Um, back to where I was um, so now it's just waiting the problem about waiting is every day and this probably goes on for a lot of people in New Jersey um, I'm waiting for government approval to protect my family um, with four kids ranging from 9 to 16 you, your you know, kids are 9 to 16? 9 God to 16 bless, man. Yeah. so mm -hmm. your, your wife and your four kids and your family is is not how long has this been going on by the way how long have you been you and mark when you hooked up and you started the process uh since we since our official first brief has been way more than a year since we um so you started. or your family could have been killed or whatever by the bad guy already and oh yeah tough shit this is new jersey yeah one of the things that um he had said during the i guess you call it a trial a hearing other than you know if he was in my shoes he would get a permit too um, you have to love that, right? Yeah. He probably has a permit. He probably he does. probably has a permit. That's the worst part about it. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, the other part was he goes, well, you know, the guy, the bad guy, has been out of prison now. At this, at the time I got to court, and all the paperwork and stuff was was filed and submitted, and the background check was done, and the investigation by the police, who, by the way, interviewed my neighbors. Um, that I didn't even live next to anymore. Like, they went back like 10 years to interview my neighbor. But You're a military veteran yeah. with no criminal record. No. You have your firearms ID card. Right. You already own guns. No domestic disputes, nope. no drunken disorderlies, no felonies. No, and how old are you? I am now 37. 30, and you have not blown your mainspring at all. And we have to interview neighbors that no longer live next to you. Correct. When they already know, the, the, the end result is they're going to deny it anyway. So it's just an exercise in semantics at this point. Am I right? Right. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, so go, fact, the, the, continue. The uh, person that they interviewed, um, I found out uh, because of they, they send you a sheet that lists everything on there, like when they did certain stuff. They interviewed that person last September 6th, right? I got my denial letter from the chief September 6th. So the day they interviewed him, he denied. So he, he was probably already written, yeah. and just waiting to officially. So the interview was done and then throw it in the mail, yeah. send it to the courts and to you. Yeah, but back to the prosecutor, he was like, the guy at, the, by, the time, by the time I got to court and by the time when he was let out of jail, um, there's like been uh, maybe 18 months in between and he was using the the fact that he didn't do anything toward me yet yet yeah in in between that time frame gotcha. that that was a reason that it wasn't an urgent necessity cuz he you know maybe he wasn't being uh you know sporadic maybe he's planning okay maybe oh, yeah. he's plan maybe he's planning something <laughs> sorry i i for me it 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 blew my mind because just because like he already did a crime he already was found guilty, went to prison for it. So when you have um, documentation, proof by a witness that uh, says that, you know, he wants to uh, get back at me. Now, what does that mean? I guess anybody can determine, you know, whatever. He, maybe he flattened Oh, he my wants tire. to write you a bad reference right. on yeah, yeah. Yelp. Okay, he wants to give you a bad review. He spent five years in jail. If he says he's going to get even with you, that means if I, if you framed me for something, or that was my perception, my five years in prison is completely focused on you. I and when I get something. out, I'm going to do something. Yeah. That, that's how I see it. Yeah. Ugh. So he, he used that time frame that he didn't do anything, and he talked to, I guess they interviewed his P.O., and parole officer yeah. for you non-criminal people out there <laughs> and apparently he, he's been in good standing since he's gotten out which whatever fine and dandy if he wants to be a good citizen from now on but that doesn't that doesn't stop him from still having a grudge against me or one of my kids you know I could be out anywhere like down south they have a farmers market cow town a lot of people go to it what's the chances that Sandy he goes, goes to that you know so um 
I could run into him there. Come to find out with the, uh, which I brought up in court, by the way, that uh, where I work and where he is listed on the, on the registry, that uh, he lives within three miles of where I work. There's a Heritage, there's a McDonald's, there's, you know, Wawa, all in that area. You're going to run into him. What's the chances coffee? that I run into him? For sure. And then even if he wasn't planning anything at that time, the sight of me could, can I say pissed off? Yes, <laughs> you could say anything you want. <laughs> Um, this way I don't get in trouble. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. You know, and you then know? that spurs him to, you know. And what if you're know. with one or two of your younger kids? Exactly. My youngest is nine. You're not allowed to defend yourself in this state. You know, he's going to, he, who knows what could happen. Uh, uh. So, so though I totally disagree with the fact that you need to have a reason, you know, um, I think any law-abiding citizen who has not been deemed to be, have a mental problem, um, I and again, they, yeah. no felonies, no drunken disorderlies, no domestic disputes. We, we we all know if you haven't beat up anybody or woman, no 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 felonies and you know no drunken disorderlies because we don't want habitual drunkards right. obviously to carry a gun. Something could happen because whenever somebody's in a the bar, they always blame the alcohol. Right. They were exactly. a jackass before they walked into the bar, but oh, I had two beers and that's why I stabbed them eighty-seven times. <laughs> Normally, I've only would have stabbed them twelve, but yeah. uh, you know I had beer in me, so. So now, what's what's the next step with this case? Now, obviously, Jay is behind the scenes. Right. I know you got some input from Dan Schmutter and stuff. They they looked at it a little bit too. That's what Mark had told me. Yeah, they he he reviewed it. Um, I did send my stuff to uh, Scott. Um, I think what really is going to happen is when we get into the federal court side. Uh, once we get there, then that's when. How you know, long before you think that happens? It's really going to depend on when they rule. So. Okay. Originally, I talked to my case manager m maybe three weeks ago, the person that's in charge of... I'm in Team 1, mine's being reviewed by Team 1, Mark's being... Uh, his case is being reviewed by Team 2. What's that mean? I don't know. No. But um, the, I was originally told I would have... Uh, I would have... I would know something by the end of August, mid-September. So I'm going to say maybe October. <laughs> Now, uh, here's the worst part, Sandy. He goes to Wawa with his nine-year-old, and this guy is at Wawa with a few friends. And in front of witnesses, if he threatens to kill him and one of his kids, God forbid, he still won't get a carry permit. Right. You still won't get it. I know. Uh, if you have a police report, ten witnesses in the Wawa and everything, the prosecutor and judge will still deny it to the next level. That that's that's how that's how oh, our yeah. state works. And the reason because of you know there are three. You need to have the the urgent necessity, which is really hard to prove that means urgent means it's going to happen right now so unless you you know bring the guy in the court with you and he's admit i'm going to hurt him right yes. now that's really the only way because there is sections of of uh the ministry of code that i read and one of them is you're if you have a if a person has a restraining order or an order from the court of protection that's supposed to be deemed as a justifiable need. It actually says it in the wording. Do you have a restraining order on this guy? Uh, yeah, a yeah. permanent one. Permanent. Oh, my God. Final restraining order is forever. You die with it. Because I had yes, three I TROs have. on me, temporary restraining orders, over the past few years, and the judge dropped them after a week. You know, there was no this, final. This is but permanent. Yeah, fine. Yeah. So he's, he covers, can never get a gun. No, he's not even yeah. allowed to drink, okay. which is... Uh, yeah, imagine. Uh, can I'm you sure. imagine that? Um, you know, but it covers me, my wife, and my kids. Um, and he lives three miles from where you work. Yeah. According to the last registry. Regist yeah, who knows where he lives. Right? And listen, let's get the benefit of that. Maybe he is reformed. Maybe he's moved on. But how do you go to bed at night knowing if that's true or not? You have to go to bed at night being prepared. I mean, I, I, hate, this, I hate to sound paranoid, but there is when people say to bump in the night. Yeah. You I'm, jump. Uh, it, I'm cautious. Yeah. yeah. The, the better word than paranoid would be a heightened state of awareness. That's that's so it. So you have to live in a heightened state. You're in condition orange all the time. You can't mm -hmm. even slip down to yellow or white anywhere down in South I, Jersey. I have a perfect example of it. Um, we have a concrete driveway, and we have one of those plastic uh, trash cans, right? So the wheels are plastic, and they make a certain sound when they drag across the concrete. And it was like three or four times my wife says, do you hear that? And I didn't hear it at first, but it kept happening where it sounded like someone was moving my trash cans at 1 o'clock in the morning down my driveway. Come to find out, one more time, I finally heard it. My dog heard it. 
we go out, go uh, go down the steps and out the front door, and there's three people outside, right near the path near my house, causing mischief. Now, granted, that wasn't him. But you but thought it was. I thought it was. Sure. You know, because my trash cans are right next to my dry, um, for my uh, garage door. You know, earlier this year, I had someone trying to kick in my garage door. So, from being inside the house, you really don't know sure. who it could be. And that stuff is, it's heightened awareness. Every little boom, especially when the sun goes down, I don't know. My wife don't know. Now, do you, do you realize this is torture for him too because having to stay just like when you're in the military when you're in forward line or something having to stay in condition orange all the time can cause mental issues post-traumatic stress disorder and everything sure. everybody needs to come down to condition white again you could never be in condition white. you're always worried about your kids you're always worried about your wife your dog and yourself and your family so the courts don't give a shit about that you know well just check your six all the time hire a bodyguard you know move out of state move somewhere else like why and why here, and here's the issue that you know, for everybody out of state, people in New Jersey just take this as a uh, as a given. Yeah. If John were to move, if John were to just drive across the bridge, which is how many miles from your house? Uh, I'm I'm in I'm shoot I'm in Pennsylvania in less than four minutes. Right. Or or Delaware. Or Delaware is even closer. And uh, there you have all full uh, rights of a citizen. But in your own state, in New Jersey, you're mm -hmm. prevented from exercising your right to protect yourself and your family. Yeah. And that's really the point. It doesn't matter whether this guy ever does anything, this particular guy does anything. It's you should have the right to protect yourself no matter what. Correct. Right. Correct. And we're focusing on this specific case because how glaring mm -hmm. is this? You know, we all know in New Jersey I can't apply for a carry permit and say, well, it's my constitutional right. They'll laugh you right out of the courts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is a guy that had threats from an inmate who, who he, you know, testified against and everything Still. that lives within three miles away. So what is like Knappen always says, they issue you your carry permit posthumously in New Jersey mm -hmm. after you're dead. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, John, your carry permit's in. We'll deliver it to the mortuary. Right. That's the we'll, way it works. We'll pack it to your coffin. Mm -hmm. What are your pole bearers can carry it? So you guys listening out of state, what happens in New Jersey doesn't stay in New Jersey. Oklahoma just overturned carry permits. The governor went against their word when they were running. Oklahoma. Okay, we're out. Lipstick bodyguard, right? You see the ad for it all the time? This is what it looks like. I, ha I, Patty, Monica, and Michaela have all gotten through security with these, by the way, because it looks like... I need to get my wife one of those. Yeah. Th this is for your wife. There you go. Oh, How was that? You. Was that thank easy you. enough? Very cool. yes. Thank you very much. They've all gotten through TSA security, international and domestic, <laughs> because it looks like a, a exactly. large lipstick. Yeah, it doesn't right. say Mace or anything on it, so it's kind of good to have around. Make sure your wife practices opening it, and if she's in a high-stress area, she should have the cap off with her thumb triggered it okay if she's uh, right-handed her key should be in her right hand that should be in her left hand with the nozzle pointing forward because when your fight-or-flight reflexes kick in and you lose your fine motor functions she'll never get to that okay right, right. so if she's right-handed that should go in her left pocket before she gets out of her car let's say to walk somewhere she should pop it out and just have it in her hand and then she can just deploy it spray and you know hit the alarm on her car to draw attention or whatever but you want to spray around the face left and right motion all around the face it has alcohol based propellant it will get under a closed eye and everything uh, mucous membranes fill up it uh, affects your ability to breathe affects your ability to see um, and then she should run screaming in a safe direction it's a, it's a good little thing to have around it's some nasty shit too. yeah I've been maced do three not, times. Do not carry on passenger aircraft. Yeah. Well, what will happen is they'll take it from you. Yeah. If, if they if they find it on you, they'll, they'll take it from you. I've had tactical pens taken from me. Uh, I went to go into a museum in uh, England, in Buckingham Palace, and security says uh, that I had a torch. So I thought it was a cigar lighter. He goes, you can't bring the torch in. I'm like, I left my cigar lighter on the thing. He takes out my flashlight. Torch. Oh, yeah. And what did he do? He took the battery out of it and told me I could have it back. What's a one, two, three battery? And after I finished it through, he gave me my battery back. I guess maybe he thought I could ignite a bomb with it or something. You know what I mean? I don't know. But he kept saying, You have a torch in your bag. I'm like, No, I don't have a torch. Well, I brought a propane torch. I'm going to weld in Buckingham Palace. You know, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, in England, it's a torch. So, pretty cool. 
But again, this is this is really disheartening. We're going to cover some local stuff now uh, when we come back. And I want, but I want you to continue. Well, no Wi-Fi connected. Okay? How does this happen to me? How does this, how does what did Scott do to me? No, really, what did Scott do to me? Scott, why do you do this to me, Scott? Hmm. Scott, why? I need a new IT guy, a new accountant, a new art guy. Um, what else do parking I need? A parking lot attendant. A parking lot attendant. I need a driver too. Sure Anybody want to be my driver? That's true. Anybody want to be my driver? I need a driver. And five seconds. Stand by. This segment is brought to you by Gun Sitters. Gun Sitters and their military division weapons guard is on Route 10 East in Whippany in the Pine Plaza. They also have a location in Eastern Pennsylvania, one opening up in Salisbury, Maryland, and one opening up in Hawaii. They will temporarily, short-term, long-term, store your firearms. If you're going through domestic, you're going through a divorce, you have kids in the house that got in trouble with the police and they say you can't have guns in the house, use it as a preemptive strike. If you're going through a problem and your marriage is uh, falling apart, put your guns there ahead of time before someone files a restraining order and they come and get confiscated. If you're active military, John's not anymore, but if you're active military, their military division weapons guard will hold and store your weapons for free while you're being deployed. So if you got deployed to Hawaii, you can't bring your guns with you. Believe it or not, New Jersey, you can't leave your handguns with your mom and dad. That's a felony. So uh, gun sitters and their military division weapons guard will hold those guns for you. It's a win-win situation. So check out gunsitters.com. Again, support those who support us. Full, ra full round the corner, gofundme.com forward slash restore dash carry dash NJ. That's the Cheeseman Gillard case, and it's self-funded. Okay, we all want this case to go. Now we know the NRA, ANGRPC has a NRA-funded case in tracking parallel with these guys. Who knows what tact will work? Okay, it's the mm -hmm. anvil and the hammer. Okay, let's look at the NRA case as the slow moving anvil that's super funded by the NRA and their New York and DC law firms. And then let's look at the, the Cheeseman Gillard case that's self funded by the little guys who might make font mistakes, but with J Factor and other people in the background, this might be the case that finds the chink in the armor. We don't know. Okay, yeah. it could also be the case that while they're focusing on it, the NRA case could slip through. Or vice versa. I don't know. All I know is two two cases is better than one case, and it's better than no cases. So, these guys need your help. Ten dollars, twenty dollars, fifty dollars. You know, uh, just send send them your support. Look what they're doing. They're sticking their necks out here, and they're trying. You know, they, they're going to get a lot of crap from local people and 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 the anti gun community. So, you know, they're sticking their necks out and putting themselves there. So, support their case, please. Okay. Uh, another disheartening thing, another young college girl in, uh, in Iowa, uh, right near Brownells actually, uh, was killed by an illegal um, alien, 24 years old, and uh, you know, right away the post, because I ranted about it, and the, by the way, you can find Ant's Rants on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and my two Facebook pages now, I'm not cross-posting it anymore, uh, but Ant's Rants is, uh, how are you guys? Good to see you. Uh, Ants Rants is uh, is really going viral. The NRA is retweeting my stuff now on mm -hmm, Twitter. Mm -hmm. They retweeted one of my uh, shooting videos, and they have 700,000 followers, and I got 135,000 impressions on the tweet. Which one was the crew? It was me shooting. The, no, it was me shooting the H&K. Oh. And people like posted, oh, good group for a shotgun. Here's the deal. I put the target out 12 feet. I took an HK-45. Double action first pull, trigger pull, single action for the next nine. I sent it out 12 feet, six inch circle. I shot 10 bullets, fast but accurate. Nine went in a circle, one was an inch low left from the circle. Now when you guys watch these videos, there's no second takes. Right. You can come and watch me with the video. I pick a gun off the wall, I set it up, I load it, I talk for 30 seconds, I shoot for 15 seconds, and then I talk for another 15 seconds. So. There's no staging. I don't shoot something six times to make sure everybody saw it or whatever. And my rants, but, but going back to Molly Tibbetts, I ranted that, you know, one person, another crime that could have been prevented. And a lot of people on the left like, well, legal legals commit crimes too. Yes, they do. They're here already. There's nothing we can do about those people. But illegal people don't belong here. 
Right. Okay, right. and all they do is pander for votes on the left. And when is it enough? When is enough going to be enough that this twenty-year-old girl whose hopes and dreams she was a dreamer too, right? Mm -hmm. Her parents now are devastated. She was out jogging. We don't know if she was sexually assaulted yet or anything, but of she was she, killed you know, with I'm, a sharp. Uh, of course, she was. You know, the problem is, is that. It, when everything gets politicized like this, we, we lose sight of the tragedy that really happens in families as, as a result of this. The, 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 the child never should have been killed. It's, it's, it's that's the bottom line. Yes, legals are going to do things. Legals are going to kill people, and that's what we have a criminal but, but justice system. But she would system. still be alive if this piece of crap wasn't here. Wasn't here. You know, and everybody's going to... And I, I blame... I also blame the employer, too. No matter how much they want to squirm out of it, it's a person who, oh, he, you know, we sent it through the INS and everything else. The system is, is flawed. The system is the, the online check. You're an employer. I'm an employer. We know how bad that's correct. Is. And if if it, when it works, it's it's uh, it's bad. You know. But what do we do to? How do we prevent that <coughs> from happening? How hey, do, you, you said know, no coughing on there. Fifteen people. No working. coffins on the air. Coughing <laughs> is fine. Oh, yeah, coffins. See, you coffins heard it wrong. Yeah, keep those outside. You know, uh, here's another end run in New Jersey. Uh, Mayor Free, Governor Free stuff. You know, the governor who can eat an apple through a chain link fence. Governor POS is what I. Yes, call him. he's following Harpo Cuomo from New York now, where they're investigating uh, insurance, Lockton. insurance. Yeah, like from Cary Guard through Lockton. No, they, and they're calling it what murder? Murder insurance. Yeah. We were, in I just fact, did a video about it actually. Did you? I am. Yeah. You're going to tell us. Tell everybody how they can find your YouTube. Now uh, that we're it's, uh, YouTube. Um, <laughs> dot com backslash NJ two A vlogger. See, he's got a thing already. I don't have a thing already. Okay. That video is not posted yet, but it's uh, it's on my phone, ready to be uploaded. So it's self-defense insurance. It's insurance for a law-abiding citizen because we can't carry in New Jersey. So it's insurance where Sandy's at home, someone breaks into his house, and he shoots the person. Now the insurance is contingent on that he's not charged with any crimes or felonies. So the, the police report, the prosecutor has to say that it was a clean shooting self-defense and then you're covered with insurance so our attorney general and our governor are calling it murder insurance so in other words mm -hmm. sandy gets that insurance says oh i can't wait till somebody breaks in so right. i can kill yeah. them yeah. okay yeah, that's the wrong way of yeah, well, that's mindset but again this is this comes from an agenda where the democrats believe that this is on their side they believe that you democrats who vote for democrats are not gun owners don't care about the Second Amendment. We know it's different. We know we know for a fact it's different here in New Jersey because we have a dark blue state where most of the people in the state vote Democrat. Yep. And we have you can't say that only Republicans are gun owners in the state of New Jersey. No, I know. And I walk know. into your so. range and see that my that range looks like true. Noah's Ark. Yeah. So here's the next one from the governor that just came out, because Betsy DeVos, the education secretary, is allowing states on their own to arm teachers, okay? Yeah. Te not any teacher, teachers that want to be trained. You were in the military, John, so if you were a teacher, you probably volunteer for that. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So here's the statement from our governor. Arming our teachers is illogical and dangerous. When I signed legislation to enact common sense gun laws in our state, my goal was to protect common children sense. and families and keep guns out of classrooms. We know what happens when a gun enters a classroom. The result is almost always tragic and devastating. Fewer guns mean fewer deaths. New Jersey will not participate in this dangerous and misguided program, and I encourage the president to instead use our resources to better provide all our children with the educational and innovative learning programs they deserve, not turn our classrooms into a war zone. So having two or three... They already are... Correct. So what about the guy? I, I forgive me if I have the wrong state wrong, but I think it was near Chicago during um, this year's graduation. They were practicing. All the seniors were in the gym room practicing uh, for their rehearsal for graduation. And some kid or person went to go uh, shoot up that classroom and an armed security guard, uh, not a cop, but an armed security guard was able to stop it. So that was a gun held by a good guy to stop the bad guy from killing kids in a school. Again. So 
it's not it shouldn't be turning it into a war zone we protect protect uh, actors we protect uh, you know banks and uh, casinos and stuff like that with guns correct why can't we protect our kids with guns because the left is loony and they think that if we say guns are banned in schools school shootings will go away because mm -hmm. they make statements like less guns less, less crime, crime which is crap correct we know that that to be now false. if we had a federal initiative that every school had to have a minimum of four armed teachers who were volunteers, teachers or administrators, anybody in the classes, anybody in the school campus, and that they were going to be trained and they were going to carry concealed. One or two mass shootings prevented by those good guys or girls with a gun, our mass shooters will look for another outlet. They'll start going to the malls or the airports or somewhere else. It will or be a different. Bombs. Oh, yeah, the, it'll the, be a different issue. situation. Absolutely. Like we said, we've never had a plane hijacked, God forbid, after September 11th, the way they did that, because we learned from that. Mm -hmm. They strengthened the doors. We know that somebody with a box cutter is not going to over. You, know, you and I, you know that you were, I'm, I'm up there. I'm going to have some fun. Okay, yeah. I'm going to smash the terrorist head on the door to the cabin until we land. And the marshals come in. I'm just going to keep smashing it, all right, until I, you know, I can make chopped meat out of it. Mm -hmm. But but we're not going to let that happen again. So it's the same thing with these school shootings. All we need is one or two that are cut short by an armed teacher or an administrator. So they stick their head in the sand, these liberals, because they think in their in their utopia that they've created that if we ban the guns, crime will go away. Just look at England. Their crime is through the roof now. The knifings and acid attacks in Virginia. Right. Evil will always find a way. Always. They will use a, always they find use a, a way. Truck. Yeah, a rental, rental truck, truck in Germany. So what do they want to do? Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London, who says living in a big city is part and parcel, you know, dealing with terrorism is mm -hmm. part and parcel of living in a big city. They're what they want to ban around all the landmarks. They want to ban vehicles now. <laughs> so again, more liberties, more freedoms, more of our lives, more time of our life. You know, every time I go to Europe... But don't I, recognize what the issue is or what the problem correct. is. Correct. Every time I go to Europe, I spend 20% uh, of my vacation going through metal detectors and having my bags checked. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go. You know, I wear my MERS. When I'm in Europe, I can wear MERS. Mm -hmm. But I, I carry my stuff. I got my flashlight. I got two tactical pens. You know, I'm, I got extra batteries. You know, it sounds crazy, but I'm always... Prepared. A little prepared there because you know if I'm in I'm in Buckingham Palace area and a bomb goes off there's a terrorist strike uh, I need as much as I can to help myself you know I can't carry a gun but you know 400 lumen flashlight a tactical pen listen with a tactical pen I can get somebody's gun right okay uh, I, as as big as you are prior military and stuff I, I if I put it on the radio or on the over the nerve I'm getting your gun so why not be prepared why not well yeah. No meow for me. Job. Okay, we're up. So, let's talk about this again. Is it right side up? Yeah, you're good. Calandro for NRA. Go on my website, calandroforNRA.com. You'll see my face in black, and it, there's a rectangle that says click for petition. You can print it out. You can bring it to friends or family, five years or more, or life members. Get their signatures, then you're going to mail it to me at the range by September 15th. I need 651 signatures. I have over that. Scott Box says I should get way over 1,000 because a lot of people aren't voting members, but they think they are. Or if the information was entered incorrectly. So I want to be suspenders in a belt. I want to make sure that I have enough. And I want to thank everybody from Cliff Toy and Gary Allison from Beacon Brass and everybody else out there that's literally kicked ass. My stuff's all down South Jersey. Square Circle, Usana, mm -hmm. Bob's, Garden State, um, and uh, Sure Shot. They're all collecting signatures for me. So thank you all. And stand by. I can read. I read. This segment is brought to you by SafeCon. NJSafeCon.net. John Willett was on last week. Are you going to be there? Are you going to stop by? I'm going to try you, to you, be there. It's, yep. it's in your backyard. You should be yep. there. September 22nd. Just stop by for 10 minutes. September 22nd. Doors open at 9 until 5. Uh, Bert Haberland and other people are reaching out to me about sponsoring tables or whatever. 
please do it, okay? Anybody that wants to uh, participate, njsafecon.net, uh, email info at njsafecon.net, John, uh, Mark Cheeseman, yeah, yeah, John Willett is looking for more sponsors, uh, speakers, contributors, donate, whatever you want to do. And the last one, obviously, is uh, County Line Firearms is another sponsor. They're on Route 10 East in East Hanover. Stop by and see Carlos. They changed the name to County Line Customs, but they're a full gun store and you can uh, get anything you want there. A couple of things, uh, some uh, stuff I want to just talk about here. I got a few letters. One is from our buddy Richie. I saw your rant, and it was on point about the girl from uh, Iowa. He said, but it wasn't Idaho. Uh, listen, semantics, Richie. Um, other than that, it was a great rant. Anything past the state Correct. I don't know. <laughs> I have some questions that may be good for your radio show. If you're making a will to leave your guns to someone, how do you do it? Do you have to list each gun and serial number? Do you have to change the will each time you get a new gun or sell one? What if the, the person you're leaving the guns to is a minor? This is very easy to do, okay? It's in Knappen's book, by the way. You can just say I leave all my firearms and accessories to uh, John Gillard, and that's, that's enough. So every time you buy a gun, you don't have to change your will. The person that receives those guns has to be eligible to get a firearms ID card. They don't have to have a firearms ID card. So they have to be 18 or older with no record. They don't need a firearms ID card. Now what you can do, Richie, let's say it's your 14-year-old nephew. You can write in your will that from when he's 14 till he's 18, the guns go to gun sitters. And they will hold the guns. They have, a, they have a will program that they will hold them until that person is 18, okay? Otherwise, you can't leave them to a minor. They have to be over 18. And they can't accept delivery of the handguns until they're 21. Only long guns until they're 18. So you could leave them with another responsible adult and say in your will that on that person's 21st birthday, they get the guns, okay? Uh, Richie also said, do you have to leave someone in charge of the weapons until the minor reaches the age? I answer that. Um, I think that maybe you can have an attorney on to discuss it. It's in uh, Knappen's book, by the way. And you also can call gun sitters, and uh, one of our listeners did this already, and set up their will with gun sitters that if something should happen, that gun sitters takes control of the guns until the minor uh, comes of age, okay? So Richie says it was informative. I answered it. Leave me alone, okay? <laughs> okay, and I have to add that uh, nothing you just heard uh, constitutes legal advice in the state of New Jersey or any other state in the union. So I said read so Knappen's book. You can go ahead and uh, get, you know, that would be for a lawyer. To I'm learning. Uh, <laughs> I'm learning. So consult a, so a, a licensed attorney in your state. So we're going to talk to you in a second, but mm -hmm. one of our Gun for Hire alumni, Glenn Meyer. Hey, I know we don't uh, talk as much as we should, but I want to say a huge thank you for training me correctly. We went and saw Kenny Chesney Saturday night, got in around 2 a.m., took a shower, and went to bed. Got up in the morning around 9.30 and went to get me and Dana a bagel and opened my truck in the driveway, and someone was sitting in the driver's seat. It had it. Yes. First reaction was grab my H&K from inside. Uh, so anyway, I slammed the door, and I kept him locked in the truck, had my wife call 911, and Fairlawn PD was there in less than a minute, okay? It must have been around the corner. Yes. Well, it's a, it's Fairlawn's it's densely small. populated, a lot of cops. Uh, they then proceeded to remove him from my truck at gunpoint. My point is, I knew how to react inside of, of and create, you know, inside of creating chaos, instead of creating chaos. I'm lucky he wasn't armed, but just wanted to say thank you and share that with you, Glenn Meyer. So he's a conditioned yellow guy all the time. So let's talk about your, you, you, John. Um, is your house well lit outside? Uh, yeah, for the most part. Um, I live right next to a path that goes into the woods that That's leads shitty. to. Uh, that leads to the schools and even the police officers in my area say that you know once schools let out at nighttime the school the behind the school becomes a hangout mm -hmm. so these these people kids i don't always call them criminals but you know hooligans it has a lot of it has a lot of traffic you know um i do have a i do have a pretty large dog that keeps me well informed Best first line of defense but um you know like I, like i tell my wife i said Dozer will give you enough time, you know, to to get to the safe. Yes. You know, he, he might, uh, you know, he might sacrifice himself, but it will give you time to get there. You now, know, he's not the, he cannot be the only line of defense because once he's taken out, 
Correct. You, know, you got you got to be able to be prepared. So yeah, he's the alarm. Yeah, he's the yep. alarm. Now, do you have an alarm system? Yes, I do. Okay, you go to bed with it at night. Turn oh, the perimeter it's, on. It's on. <laughs> okay, good. You have any panic buttons? That I don't have. Do I it. I mean, there is a there is a emergency button on the panel itself, no. but you got to get there. They're they're so. like a hundred and thirty dollars. Okay, put one in the master bedroom. And put one like wherever you guys spend the majority of your time, living room, family room, wherever right. it may be. They're little, you know. We have them. I have them at my house too. I don't. I don't. I don't use them. I, you know, I live alone. But uh, oh well, I shouldn't say that. I have Winston with me. Mm. What about? Uh, do you have a keypad in your bedroom? No, I don't. Okay. See, this is a good thing to do. You put a keypad in your bedroom so that you can, before you go to bed at night, you check that the perimeters set up. The other thing that's nice about it is if someone breaks into a basement window, you can read it on your keypad. Right. Absolutely. All right. Now, I have alarm.com, so mine shows up on my phone, and my phone is on my nightstand. So, uh, oh, so you can do it. You don't need a keypad yeah. then. The alarm.com will tell you what the, where yeah, the break-in is. Yeah, yeah, right on the phone. So you're, you're good with that, which is so great with alarm.com. They really, you know, I'm not an advocate for them. They, you know, for alarm.com, they're not paying us, but most good alarm companies now have alarm.com app. Sandy, I can open and close my garage doors. Yeah. I get, the, the cleaning lady comes to my house on Fridays. The last four digits of her phone number will open my door only from 11 a.m. and Friday till 1 o'clock in the afternoon. She came one time late, like 1.15. She couldn't get in the mm. door. She called me up and said, Mr. Anthony, I'm trying to get in. I can't. And I opened it for her. So, And I can block her anytime I want from the phone. So that's good. So now you have, you have peepholes in the house. Mm-hmm. Do you do you all sleep on the second floor? Uh, we we are separated. Uh, my boys are my boys are downstairs. Okay, so that that leaves hard self defense issues. Oh, you, I you know. know what we, I mean. We 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 try to uh, go over. Um, Just have an emergency drill. Yeah, we we do have we do try to go over. I I tell everybody every six months when you cha- every daylight savings time. When you change the batteries on your all your fire and smoke detectors, carbon monoxide, you should check all your fire extinguishers, and every family should have a fire drill and an emergency drill. Okay, and it doesn't have to be like if the bad guy. You just say in an emergency, like your kids. I would have them stay in place in the room. If you guys have a code word, mm-hmm. let's say you guys have a code word that you scream out, and that tells your kids to get under their beds, so that if the bad guy came in and looked, he doesn't see any kid there. He would assume he ran upstairs to the master bedroom till so you can get down and and maintain you know some kind of perimeter or not. And the same thing where your kids and really close family members, especially for your youngsters, there should be a code word. Uh, because a lot of kids get abducted like they, I go to your school and say daddy got into a car accident and I'm coming to pick you up uh, and your kid should say what's the code word all right if the kid if the, if I don't know the code word let's say it's Superman if I don't know the code word then the kid won't go with me unless the cops are called all right because a lot of kids are abducted by family mm. members and friends you know if I I've never been to your house but if I came to your house 15 or 16 times I'm a personable guy your kids are gonna like me I joke around you know I'm the cool uncle let's go play with a cigarette later and a switchblade or something <laughs> you know but if I had ulterior motives I could go right. to your school the kids school and, and say you know your dad was your dad and I were out and he was in an accident hunting I he sent me to pick you up the kids gonna come with me now a lot of schools won't release kids but what if I got him outside Right. On his way home or something, right? Because that's what happens. You teach your kids not to go to strangers. But what about right. family members and friends? So it's good to teach your kids a code word. I talk about this all the time, too. You have four kids. So if you go to, let's say, Disney, every morning when you guys get up, you should take a picture of each kid with what they're wearing before you leave for the park and have it on your phone. Because if you, one of your kids gets separated from you, you no, have. Was, last thing he was wearing. Yep. When you show people, you're not showing them their communion picture from a year ago or a goofy picture or something, you know, that they were making faces. You're going to show the authorities and security a picture of your kid with what they're wearing at that moment. And, right. you know, then they put the park on lockdown, God forbid, and they're looking for the white shorts and the red shirt with the little blonde haired kid that looks like Dennis the Menace, you know, whatever, whatever it may be. These are just little tips that are good. Your front door, obviously, is solid core door. Yes, it is. Okay. Another good thing to do that's cheap is all your bedroom doors uh, switch to solid core door and put a deadbolt on the inside of them. All right, and teach your kids in an emergency to shut that door and deadbolt it because now that room becomes a safe house, you know, safe room, especially your master bedroom. Now, you, a good plan would be to come down the stairs and have the kids run behind you into the master bedroom, let's say, and make the master bedroom your safe room. That's kind of uh, our, our routine that we, we do go over is 
um, my room is the safe haven um, and uh, my my boys and my uh, and my daughter are also trained so if say I was taken out mm -hmm. you know um, someone might take out the, the head guy thinking that they're they're uh, they're going to have easy targets uh, it's not going to be so easy in my house um, they they are trained. They know how to, if need be. So I'm not the only line of defense. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, and and uh, and my wife on top of that. How many cell phones in the house? Three or four. Any landline? No. For good, because forget it anyway. Because if I broke into <laughs> the house, I take the first phone off the hook yeah. that I see. Now there's no landlines, but cell phones should be on nightstands on a charger. You should teach your kids. Your wife too. That when you dial nine one one from a cell cellular phone, the first thing you should say is your address. Nothing more than your address, clear and concise. What the emergency is, and then your address again, clear and concise. Because cellular phones don't work like landline phones. Uh, it could take a while for them to pinpoint right. where it is if I knock the phone out of your kid's hand. It's here's an example, of kind of that um, when I needed to uh, call nine one one, I got a dispatch from Delaware like because it rolls over yeah if there's emergencies right. it rolls over yeah and that's like, how it works where are you calling from yeah yeah oh, I'm on 123 Main Street across the street from the Red Church <laughs> uh okay yeah. I didn't even ha I had no idea yeah. that they were even in Delaware yeah see yeah. my 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 phone comes like my phone state. my phone bills the range I live a mile and a half away if I call 911 from my house and you're the bad guy, you knock the phone out of my hand, there's going to be five Woodland Park police cars at the range looking for me. Okay? So these are little tips that you can do. Good lighting outside. Uh, you know, keep the hedges cut down low. It's nice to have defensive hedges, too, like thorn bushes and rose bushes <laughs> around the house, believe yeah, so it or I, not. I've it, had those put in since when we, I first We talked you, about we it. Talked about it's good because go nobody can hide them. The other thing is if someone runs out of your house and they run through those hedges, they're going to leave DNA. They're either going to leave skin or they're going to leave clothing. So now if the guy runs to the Wawa and tries to pretend he wasn't the break-in actor and he's all scratched up from thorns and a piece of his shirt is missing, that it matches the shirt in, the, in, the, in your hedges, you know, your thorn bushes, it's not a bad thing. Okay, little things to think about. In my case, they're going to just go arrest the guy who cleans my gutters and windows. I, I love it. You have you have sliding doors anywhere? I do. Got to put a Charlie yes. bar across. Good. All right. So you got it well. So let's talk about this again. It's GoFundMe forward slash GoFundMe.com forward slash restore dash carry dash NJ. A uh, couple of things here. Knife rights. They just lost another case. You can't carry any type of uh, auto assist knife in New York still. Nope. They're probably going to take it to the next federal level. I have a ton of classes coming up. Urban Pistol 2, Urban Carbine 2, Urban Pistol 3, Holster Draw. Um, and Jimmy has in October part two of the long range shooting if you've taken the first one. My master will be here, Masad Ayub, October 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th with MAG 20 and MAG 40. So he's going to be here for four days. He endorsed me for the NRA Board of Directors run. He also got uh, five pages of signatures for me, That's him fantastic. and Gail. That's yes. Great. John, thank you for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being another uh, tip of the spear in the fight of New Jersey, and we're going to keep you guys posted. Please send some support to these guys, all right, because they can use bucks. it. Hey, we're we're say, supporting them, too. I would say uh, even if you can't donate um, because of whatever situation you're going through, if you are like-minded, you can share yes. the page. You can link it to a Facebook page, yeah. send it to an email. Email to your friend list. Yep. You don't necessarily have to give, but you can share it, and it's free to do that. So feel free to go out there. We can use it. Everybody uh, can afford a dollar, and there are enough of you listening right now to be able to fund this for the next 200 years. Yes. I hope everybody's enjoying this. Check out our YouTube channel. We'll get a custom domain in about two weeks. But look how close you can see me. Oh, that's, <laughs> just right? Cameras were a very, <laughs> very bad idea. Thank you all, John. Thank you. Keep rocking on, man. We need Thanks. more people like you. Less sheep, more wolves. Well, looks like you've done it again. You've wasted yet another perfectly good hour listening to Gun for Hire Radio. Gun for Hire Radio is a counterthink media production. The music used in this broadcast is managed by Cosmo Music, LBC, New York, New York, and the licensed broadcast music incorporated. I'm Sandy Berardi. This here is Winston. We love you guys. See you next week.
great for me. Well, I was behaved today. <laughs> Good, I hope I did all right. You fucking <laughs> rocked it. I will send you an email, text, message, this thing, that thing, and the other thing on Sunday. How do I shut these things off? Decide.